Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fifth video in the STM32i2C slave series, and as mentioned in the previous video, today we will program the slave to store the data in the memory. We will define some registers for the slave, and the master will request the data to be written in a particular register, or it can also write multiple data bytes starting from a particular register. We will start working with the code from the part 3 video. Here you can see the i2c slave source file contains the same code, where we left in part 3. Let's define 10 registers for the slave. I am initializing the registers with the value 0. The rest of the code will remain unchanged. When the address match callback is called, the slave will request for one data byte. And when this one byte data is received, the slave receive callback is called. Here if the slave is receiving the last byte, we will call the receive function with the option of the last frame. Otherwise it is called with the option of the next frame. If the Rx count is equal to the buffer size, the slave cannot receive any more data, and we will simply call the function to process the data. Everything I mentioned just now has been covered in the part 3 video, so if you don't understand, please watch that video. Now we will write the function to process the data. The start register number is stored in the first byte of the Rx buffer. The total number of registers the master wants to write, is equal to the Rx count minus 1. The Rx count is equal to the total number of bytes received in the Rx buffer. This also contains the first byte, which is the register address. That's why we subtract 1 from the Rx count, and this gives us the total data bytes in the Rx buffer. If you want to program the master, you can use the function, i2c memwrite to write the data into the registers. The 6 represents the start register, 1 represents that the start register size is 1 byte long. The TX data contains the data, master wants to write. 4 is the total number of bytes the master wants to write. So this function will write the 4 bytes of data into the slave registers, starting from the register 6. When the slave receives this request, the first byte of the Rx buffer will contain the register address. This 4 will be the number of registers. Now calculate the address of the end register. This is equal to the start register, plus the number of registers, minus 1. The minus 1 is because the register address starts from 0. There are a total of 10 registers, whose address varies from 0 to 9. Since 9 is the last register, if the end register is exceeding 9, we will call the error handler. Let's define the index variable with the value 1. This will keep track of how many bytes has been read from the Rx buffer, and it starts with 1 because the 0th byte contains the register address. Now inside the for loop, we will copy the data from the Rx buffer to the i2c registers. The loop will repeat as many times as the number of registers we are updating. Since we have 10 registers in total, let's update the Rx buffer size to 11. That's it. Let's build and debug the code now. I have added the register database in the live expression. The write to function is the same as the memory write function I explained earlier. The first byte is the register address, and then we have the data bytes. So here the master wants to write 5 bytes of data, starting from the register 4. Here at the Rx buffer, you can see that the first byte received is the register address, and then the next five bytes are the data bytes. The error counter is incremented as there was an error because the slave received less than 11 bytes. The i2c registers has been updated with the new data, starting from register 4 and all the way up to register 8. Let's try sending the data starting from register 1. 
Here you can see the updated registers. If we want to update all the registers at once, we can send the 10 bytes of data starting from register 0. You can see the updated registers in the live expression. Let's say I want to send 5 bytes of data, starting from the register 6. We will go into the error handler in this case. This is because the end register value will be 10, and it exceeds 9. So if you want this to work properly, the master should send the data as per the register defined in the slave. If the data exceeds the available registers, the error handler will be called. This is it for the video. I hope you understood how to store the data in the memory of a slave device. In the next video, we will see how the slave will respond to the read query from the master. The link to download the code is in the description of the video. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.